Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome back to Esther's Song of Praise. I hope that all of you are having an amazing day. It's a beautiful fall day. Some will call this in the Indian summer, where it's a little warmer today than it has been for the past few days. But I read this from a, um, a therapist online. She says, when you recall what you have already survived, you will not flinch in the face of this fire. You are to persist, outlast, ascend. And then of course I wrote persevere, right? Those are all synonyms of what we're learning as we study the life of King David, because that's exactly what he did and that's what we're called to do as well. King David is able to praise the Lord in spite of just, you know, his hardships, his adversaries, feeling like he's surrounded by a thousands upon thousands of enemies. And he's been doing that since he was a small boy. When he took the stone in the slingshot, took off all the armor given to him uh, by the soldiers and said, all I need is this slingshot in my face. And he slayed Goliath. And that's exactly what to do. Brothers and sisters, whatever your goal is in your life, overcome, that you can persevere, that you can ascend, and that you are a survivor. Because if you're listening to my voice, you have survived everything that has tried to take you off of this world, out of this world, up to present day. So the Lord calls us to be soldiers, worshipers, fighters, um, but he gives us everything that we need. He gives us his Holy Spirit. He gives us, you know, um, his angels to protect us, his Holy Spirit to guide us, and his word to lead us. So with that being said, we're going to continue on with the 48th chapter of the book of Psalms as he uses his word to nourish our spirit daily and make us more like him. So with that being said, if you're new here, welcome. I'm going to open up with a brief prayer and then we'll get into his word and I'll share a few of my thoughts and favorite verses at the end. Heavenly Father, Lord, we worship you today. We ask, Lord, that you would continuously make us stronger than we ever thought possible. Help us, Lord God, to be victorious in the face of our enemies, Lord. Father, we worship and we praise your holy name. And we ask for a mustard seed of faith that we can go into every battle knowing that we will be victorious against any Goliath that may stand in our way, whether that's physical, spiritual, material, mental, whatever it is, Lord, that we are overcomers in Christ, Father God that you will help us, Lord, to put on the whole armor of God, that we don't need, you know, to trust in a, a, a sword or a shield, but we know that we can trust in your holy name, Father. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that we will have victory over all of our enemies, people who will smile in your face and try to stab you in the back. Father, you said the, the war is already won, the victory is ours as we stand on your word today. We ask, Lord God, that you would open our hearts and our minds and our spirits to this next chapter, Lord God, that it will produce fruit in our lives, Lord, that it will nourish us deep within our spiritual being, Lord God. We ask all these things in your wonderful, beautiful son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. The Book of Psalms, chapter 48. A song. A Psalm of the Sons of Korah. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise in the city of our God, his holy mountain. Beautiful in its loftiness, the joy of the whole earth, like the heights of Sephron is Mount Zion, the city of the great king. God is in our citadels. He has shown himself to be her fortress. When the kings joined forces, when they advanced together, they saw her and were astonished. They fled in terror. Trembling seized them there, pain like that of a woman in labor. You destroyed them like ships of Tarshish, shattered by an east wind. 
As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord Almighty, in the city of our God, God makes her secure forever. Within your temple, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love. Like your name, O God, your praise reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Mount Zion rejoices. The villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments. Walk about Zion, go around her, count her towers, consider well her ramparts, view her citadels, that you may tell of them to the next generation. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. I love chapter, I love this chapter, but I love verse 14. Let's start with verse 9, where King David says, Within your temple, O God, we will meditate on your unfailing love. And that doesn't just mean, you know, a physical temple, right? But in our in our um humanly temple, right? That the Lord comes and he dwells within us. And so every single day, every moment of every day, we can meditate on the goodness of God. We can meditate on his unfailing love. I love that. Like your name, O oh God, your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Again, just focusing on the goodness of God, that no matter what we're facing in life, that we can focus on him and his goodness, on his power, on his deliverance, and know that he will be there for us, that his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are above our thoughts, but know that his timing is perfect. He will never put more on us than we can bear. We can trust in that fact. We can trust in his character. And then another verse, verse 14, where he concludes this chapter in saying, for this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. I love that. Brothers and sisters, you know, we came into this world alone and ultimately we, we will leave it alone, but know that the Holy Spirit is always with us and that our God is our God forever and ever, that there is no end, that he will be our guide even to the end. And that means the end, of course, of our lives, um, because with God, there is no beginning or end. So we can trust him to do right by us, even when we don't necessarily do right, um, you know, within ourselves. We can trust that the Lord is there. He's gracious. He's forgiving. He loves us so much. He loves you and I so much, brothers and sisters. And a lot of times, you know, when we go through hardships or when we face down enemies, when we have adversaries and obstacles in our lives, it's very easy to get discouraged. But I wanted to just speak life into you today and to remind you that the Lord loves you so much. That he cares for each and every one of us, that he knows the number of hairs on each of our heads. <laughs> and you and I as human beings, we don't even know that, but he does. He loves us more than the sands on the seashore. And just to stand on his word and to know that he is faithful. It can carry us through some of the darkest hours in the hardest valleys of our life. But when you're deep in a dark valley, just like King David, know that he will carry you up to the next mountain. He's preparing you for another mountain. When I look back over my life and I've seen myself um, you know, there's some years that have answers and there's some years that have questions. There's some years where I was in valleys, deep ones. And then there are other years where I was on the mountaintop. And what I've learned is out of those valley experiences comes a deeper appreciation for the Lord, a deeper knowledge of who he is, but also the greater the next mountain. And I've realized that pattern throughout my life. And I hope you see that as well. So with that being said, um, I, I hope that this you know, chapter has blessed you. I hope that you will like the video. It will do me a huge favor and also share it. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And please leave your favorite verses in the comments section. Or if you have a prayer request, I'd love to pray with you as well. 
So with that being said, I hope that all of you have a wonderful Monday and I will talk with you later. Take care, brothers and sisters. Be blessed. Goodbye.